Electric cars, you've definitely heard of them by now. The company most people know is Tesla, and that's because still today, Tesla has a huge lead on scaling electric vehicles. However, the competition is beginning to arrive, and it seems like we hear about a new one or see a commercial about one from a major established brand each week. Today, we're going to get into the very latest EV competition coming Tesla's way, so let's get into it. Before we dive in, it's worth noting the long list of cars I won't be mentioning in this video. That's because I've covered them already in previous roundups like this, linked below, or they are still a ways from release. Some of these will include the Rivian R1T, GMC Hummer EV, Ford F-150 Lightning, VW ID4, Polestar 2, Porsche Taycan, Mercedes EQS, Lucid Air, BMW i4 and iX, Nissan Aria, Tesla Cybertruck, VW ID Buzz, GMC Sierra EV, Genesis GV60, Cadillac Celestique, Cadillac Lyric, Hyundai Ioniq 5, and Kia EV6, among others. Some of these are already on the market, but others are promised soon. As for the latest EVs, there are a few exciting ones just recently announced. As a quick overview, Tesla now sells four vehicles. I always mention them because they truly are the company automaker are trying to catch up with when it comes to electric vehicle scaling. Say what you want about the company and their high prices, but they continue to break delivery records in numbers far greater than almost every other company making EVs. They also have a big advantage with their on-the-road charging, since their supercharger network, currently exclusive to their cars, has over 35,000 chargers. They are reliable, easy to use, and fast. Every other car I mentioned today will be using third-party charging, at least at launch. Tesla's cheapest car is the Model 3. The base model gets 270 two miles of range for $46,990. They also offer a long range model with a 358 mile range, but pricing and ordering are in limbo right now until 2023. The top spec gets a 315 mile range, zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds, and is $62,990. The Model Y is Tesla's most popular car and the most popular EV in many markets. It starts at $65,990 for a 330 mile range and goes up to $69,990 for the performance model with 303 miles of range and a 0-60 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Those are the cars that most newly announced EVs are competing with, but the Model S and X are still sold by Tesla, both starting over $100,000. Now let's see what competition is coming. Overall, you'll see that many brands are announcing cars with a bit less range and certain features, but a more affordable price than what Tesla offers. First up is the first true electric offering from one of the most established automakers, the Honda Prologue. Honda has dragged their feet on true electrification for a while, now, but now they have officially unveiled the design of their first true electric SUV offering. It's slated for the 2024 model year, and this car is actually co-developed with GM. It's built using GM's Ultium platform, so it will likely be very similar, functionally, to a Chevy Blazer EV. Quote, Honda today offered the first look at the exterior and interior stylings of the all-new Honda Prologue battery electric SUV that will come to market in North America in 2024. The Prologue design features clean and simple neo-rugged exterior and interior stylings and ample interior space that's ready for adventure inside and outside the city limits. As for its size, it will be noticeably larger than the very popular Honda CRV, coming in at 121.8 inches for the wheelbase. It's about 8 inches longer and 5 inches wider than the CRV. Honda says the Prologue will have a generous interior, which will provide ample space for passengers and cargo. Showing a tech-rich cabin, the Prologue will have a standard, fully digital 11-inch driver display panel and an 11.3 inch audio slash connectivity display. In the photos they shared, the exterior looks pretty good and like a fairly standard SUV. The interior takes a lot of inspiration from modern EVs, combining a range of standard buttons with a gauge cluster display and infotainment touchscreen. They have not yet announced a range for this car, but since it's built off of the Blazer, which is expected to get around 250 to 320 miles per charge, the Prologue should fall into a very similar category. There isn't pricing listed yet, but car and driver estimates a starting price of $45,000 with the highest spec coming in at $55,000. The interesting thing about this car is that it's Honda's first true electric offering, coming in 2024 using GM's technology. Not until 2026 do they plan to build electric cars like this on their own platform. Honda has also recently unveiled small details about their Acura ZDX. This is expected in 2024 and will be built on the platform of the more expensive Cadillac Lyric. That should give it a 300 mile range and quote, the interior of the Acura ZDX could be a big leap from gas-powered Acuras. It could represent a whole new level of sophistication and minimalism for the company. We'll have to see how these vehicles develop and when we get more details about them. 
Next up is a very exciting EV that's being delivered quicker than many expected, the Rivian R1S. The Rivian R1S is the SUV version of the very popular R1T. It's Rivian's first SUV offering, and it's one of the first true three-row electric SUVs on the market that doesn't have a teardrop shape for efficiency. Today, when you price one, it starts at $78,000, but that price can quickly increase when adding options like the quad motor all-wheel drive, larger battery pack, and more. With the large pack, Rivian offers an EPA-estimated range of 316 miles, which is very impressive for a vehicle this size. Of course, that is somewhat achieved with bigger battery pack. That's the spec they are shipping now, fulfilling a backlog of pre-orders for the past couple years, but over the coming years, they'll begin shipping the cheaper options. The dual motor standard range option is what will cost $78,000, and it gets over 260 miles of range on a charge. While this SUV is quite expensive, it's actually fairly competitive in the market it's in. I'm happy to see deliveries of the SUV underway, and we'll likely see this car become even more popular than the Rivian R1T. Now, another EV from an established brand is the Toyota BZ4X. I've talked about it here before, but I'm mentioning it again since production has restarted. Toyota shipped 2,700 BZ4Xs total before finding a significant flaw in it. The wheels were at risk of falling off, so they had to recall every single one of these cars produced. For a few months, they were in limbo waiting for a fix, but just last week, a fix was announced and they resumed production. They are planning to reopen sales in the US in the near future, so it's worth looking into this car once again. The 2023 BZ4X is another all-electric SUV. It's about three inches longer than the RAV4 with a lower height and longer wheelbase. Overall, it's what you'd expect from Toyota. It looks like a Toyota SUV and inside has a fairly normal modern setup. Two screens, a variety of physical controls, and more. They should be offering two trims, XLE and Limited, starting at $43,335. So it's over $20,000 cheaper than a Model Y if you can lock in that price, but it does show. The top EPA range for the front-wheel drive model is 200 52 miles and 228 miles for the all-wheel drive model. In the real world as well, car and driver found it far less efficient and added, quote, regenerative braking isn't aggressive enough to allow one pedal driving, real world range isn't up to snuff. The BZ4X is also severely limited for DC fast charging when temperatures drop below freezing. This likely means that the car isn't even viable in cold areas, which is unfortunate to see. We'll be seeing more reviews once this car scales up though, and I'm excited to see this along with its sister car, the Subaru Solterra. It's built off of the same platform and will have very similar specs. Next up is a very new EV offering from Hyundai, the Ioniq 6. By now you've likely seen the Ioniq 5, and you can check out my full review of that car linked up here or in the description below. But their next offering is the Ioniq 6. It's clearly built off the same platform, but comes in a much different, smaller shape. This car is clearly aimed to compete with the Tesla Model 3, and it holds its own pretty well when it comes to specs. The full updated WLTP range of the Ioniq 6 now comes in at 382 miles. Roughly converted to EPA, that would mean it gets about 341 miles of range. That's only about 16 miles less than Tesla's EPA range for the long range Model 3. And Hyundai does it with a fairly similar battery pack size. It is also very fuel efficient thanks in part to its drag coefficient of 0.21. This makes it, quote, among the most energy efficient mainstream EVs available today. It also will be using an 800 volt architecture, so just like the Ionic 5, Hyundai says you can charge 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. Of course, that's a if you can find the right charger at that speed, but it's impressive nonetheless. They are planning a standard range option of the Ionic 6 as well with a 53 kilowatt hour battery, and that should get a rough range of 237 miles EPA. As for timing, Hyundai says, quote, Ionic 6 will be one of the most energy efficient electric vehicles on the market when it goes on sale later this year in select markets in Europe and next year in North America. They also add that this is coming in 2023 with limited availability. Pricing is estimated to start at $44,000 for the lowest trim and go up to $54,000 for the top spec option if you can get that without a dealer markup. Next up, coming in the fall of 2023, is the Chevy Equinox EV. Chevy has officially unveiled this car and says that MSRP will be starting around $30,000. If they can deliver, that's very impressive. The higher specs will include an estimated 300 mile range, 17.7 .7 inch diagonal screen, and 70 miles of range recouped with 10 minutes of charging. It will also offer a zero to 60 in six seconds, 290 horsepower, and be able to tow up to 1500 pounds. The interior features a combination of screens and buttons folding rear seats for cargo space, and more things that are standard for a modern SUV. They have announced five different trims for the Equinox, with the base model getting 250 miles of range. 
Overall, it's very much positioned as a practical, affordable electric car. If they can deliver on those specs at their MSRP estimates, it will be a very popular option, blowing away a lot of the competition. GM says the 2RS trim will ship first in fall of 2023, with the rest of the trims becoming available in spring of 2024. Before then, they are shipping the Blazer EV. That SUV will begin shipping in summer of 2023, start at an estimated MSRP of $44,995, and offer up to 300 20 miles of range, among other features. The 0 to 60 on the performance model is under 4 seconds, so it's definitely built to compete. They've announced four different trims, so we should see three of those trims released and shipping to customers by the end of next year. If they can truly deliver 320 miles of range on an electric SUV at $51,995 in summer of 2023, again, that will be very popular. The big questions with any EVs that are announced and priced significantly lower than competition are, is it scalable and is it profitable. We want cheaper EVs, but we want them to last and be readily available, and not just something made in small quantities. Next up is a car that has been around for quite some time now, but has gone through different phases of scaling, the Mustang Mach-E. Ford has faced price increases and delays with the Mach-E, but most recently they updated their trims. The latest updates include the removal of the base model select trim. They appear to have been facing too much demand there, so it may come back eventually, but now the cheapest option for the Mach-E is $54,975. That's the premium spec and includes a 247 mile rear wheel drive range. That can be upgraded to 306 miles of range if you prefer. For the California Route 1 model, they offer a range of 312 miles EPA, a 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds, matching the long range Model Y, and it starts at $63,575. The top spec of the GT model with a 270 mile range in 0 to 60 is 3.8 seconds. That comes in at $69,895, or you can upgrade further to a fast Faster 0 to 60 and lower range. That EV has been around for some time, but Ford is particularly keen on increasing production, hoping to hit 200,000 per year by 2023. Next up, let's change it up a little with the latest announced EV truck option. So far, we've seen the Rivian R1T Hummer EV and Ford F-150 Lightning ship. The Rivian and Hummer in particular are proving very popular, useful options, but GM is also planning a Silverado and Sierra EV to come after the Hummer. Over at Ram, though, they haven't announced true specs on an all-electric offering. Many see this as them being too late to the game, but Ram sees it differently. They have teased their Ram 1500 EV, and now their CEO says that while it's late, the Ram will beat all all others. Back in January, reports said that Ram is adjusting their pickup every month as rivals hit the market. So they are watching the competition come out and improving on their trucks constantly. Quote, we are preparing the EV pickup trucks for 2024 and we are doing it by adjusting the specs and adjusting the performance in function of what we see coming from our competitors. It's a fact that we are coming slightly after them, but it's also a fact that we have the opportunity to adjust the competitiveness and the appeal of our own trucks to what they are doing, which which is a competitive advantage, which is a fantastic situation for the consumer because the real winner of this competition is the consumer. More recently, seemingly after many tweaks to the Ram 1500 EV, Ram's CEO said that it will beat the R1T, F-150 Lightning, Silverado EV, and Cybertruck in range, towing, payload, and charging time. That would be huge if Ram holds true to what they're teasing, and they've also teased a starting price of $45,000. Of course, for its specs to beat every part of every other EV truck even announced, including the Cybertruck, it will be part of a much more expensive spec, so we'll see how that pans out. I'm excited to see the full reveal of this truck. Over at BMW, they have an upcoming all-electric premium offering, the BMW i7 sedan, which is starting at MSRP $119,300. It includes a 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, a range up to 318 miles, 536 horsepower, and up to 80 miles of charging recouped in 10 minutes. Inside, it features a curved display and what they call their interaction bar. The rear even has a massive screen that can fold down when needed. Clearly, this car is positioned as a top-of-the-line luxury vehicle, and if it comes in at that price point, it will definitely take on competitors in that price range. Of course, these are much lower volume cars though, so the focus for most brands will be on their more affordable options. The Polestar 3 is Polestar's first SUV offering. Its full unveil is actually scheduled to come out tomorrow, the 12th of October, so we'll get a lot more details soon, but here's what we know leading up to that unveil. The Polestar 3 will 
will be built in America, has an estimated starting price of $75,000, and is expected to compete with cars like the Jaguar I-Pace and BMW iX. As far as range is concerned, the top range of the Polestar 2 is 270 miles, but that's with a starting price of $48,400. I think we will be looking at a range over 300 miles in the Polestar 3, given its starting price, but we'll see. Chrysler is a brand you may not have heard much from lately, but they are planning an all-electric car called the Airflow. The 2025 Chrysler Airflow has a rumored range of 440 miles, but we'll have to see how that pans out, since it would significantly beat all other brands' offerings. I guess besides the far more expensive Lucid Air. Their website claims a 400 mile range, but it is very clear that this is a concept vehicle. That likely means many changes getting this car to be realistically designed for scaling before it's released. It's expected to be a 2025 model year, so could theoretically begin shipping in 2024, and is expected to start at $50,000. The Pinnacle model would be around $60,000. Inside, there are many extremely premium features for the interior, and it has a number of screens up front, so it's unclear exactly where this car will be positioned if it comes to market. It seems like it would be competing with cars like the Model Y, but in order for it to be competitively priced, some of the features teased likely won't make it to production. Either way, especially if the Ram EV ships, we may see more about the Chrysler Airflow in the coming months. Next up is an EV you may have forgot about, the Kia Nero EV. Kia's EV focus has been on the new EV6, which is built on the same new platform as the Ioniq 5, but the Nero EV has been around for some time now. The latest 2023 model of the Nero offers some pretty competitive EV specs, even though it's a car that has been around and still offers a hybrid and plug-in hybrid version. The 2023 Nero is actually 2.5 inches longer than the previous year, which adds a tiny bit more cargo space inside. It also has a front trunk in similar fashion to the EV6 where it's barely functional but does exist. The battery size is 64.8 kilowatt hours, which gets 253 miles of range. It offers fast charging, but the first big drawback you'll see is right there, with its top DC fast charge rate at 85 kilowatts. The EV6 can do 300 150 in the right scenario. It has a number of updated features and has the latest infotainment designs from Kia, so it's definitely upgraded for the newest model year. It's a decent functional EV, but has downsides with road trip charging speed and other features that competitors offer. The pricing has not yet been announced for this latest near EV yet, but it should come cheaper than the base price of the EV6, which is $41,400. If it doesn't, it will definitely be a very odd EV option. As you can see, there are a slew of EV options coming to market in the next Next few years. As I mentioned in regards to the Equinox EV, the real question is, can these be scaled? Large scaling of electric cards means large access to battery supply, and that's something many automakers are truly only beginning to understand the scale of. It's very exciting to see various impressive EVs announced, but people are less and less jumping on them as Tesla killers because time and time again, they just don't actually ship in large quantities. I really hope this changes in the next couple years. I'm definitely rooting for all of the EVs I talked about throughout this video, and competition in this space is very much welcomed. For you, which EV talked about in this video is your personal favorite? Which would you drive? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, if you want to see my full review of the Hyundai Ioniq 5, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.